Hi, I'm Stacy Greenbaum. I'm the Communications Director at the Simons Foundation, and I'm really happy and proud to introduce our longtime friend here, um, Elizabeth Urbanski, who has um, purchased all the art uh, for the Simons Foundation at our last offices and at, in these offices. And um, for yeah, 15 years. I've been working with Marlon for 15 years. It's 15 very, years. In my opinion, a long rela term relationship. It is, it's mm -hmm. great. So, 15 out of 25 years, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, so we're going to take a tour around, uh, around the premises, uh, showing you our best and favorite things. And we're going to start walking up the stairs and see, seeing these Matthew Brants. These two large-scale photographs are a new addition to the Simons Foundation collection. In these photographs, he's taken images of Hawaii, and then after the image is printed, he takes elements such as fabric and lace, and he rolls up the photograph and places them within the soil in which the landscape image was actually taken, and they are buried for about a year. In the course of time, the moisture, the humidity, the environment, and all the different elements of time and nature affect the surface of the image. So when they're unburied and unfurled, you have all of these wonderful incidences of color and abstraction and pattern and form that make it such a delightful and rich image to look at. This is one of everyone's favorite, favorite pieces, and it was also one of the first ones that we got. Is that right? Yes, this is actually the second piece we got for the Simons Foundation, and it was originally placed in the original um, conference room. For the collection, Marilyn was really interested in having abstract art. She didn't want anything that was representational because she wanted people to feel that they could sit and look at the pieces and get lost into them and lost in their thoughts. This is artist Pia Fries, and she's of course referencing abstract expressionism, but in a new way. She uses palette knives and extruders and creates these very thick impastas. So they almost have a sculptural quality in themselves as they stand away from the background. This is the California artist, Pei White. Uh, she's known for bridging fine art and craft. And so this is a tapestry that she designed and then was created in Brussels. It's interesting as a subject matter that it is smoke because it has a, a specific easily identifiable form, but then it has a sense of formlessness and movement and flow within the space. Was it a part of your um, calculus that this is about smoke? Was the fact that it's a thick, heavy, omnipresent black smoke, was that part of your, what made you want to procure this for us? It never occurred to me. This is the artist Andres Krisar. It's a sculpture entitled One as Two. It consists of two magnetized face masks. The one hanging from the wire is the artist himself and the one on the base is of his mother. The tensile quality of the suspended wire makes the work become very animated. The fact that they're both magnetized creates a sense of codependency, yet also an attraction and repulsion. This is um, really one of my favorite pieces, and it looks actually like a lot of little nature gnarlies going around. Like, is, is, what is this meant to depict, if anything? It's actually entitled Pink Swamp, and she's referencing a landscape, but also, of course interpreting it in her own uh, vision. I love that it has these kind of weird biomorphic, kind of oozing, bubbling, gurgly shapes to me. This is the artist Pat Steer. It has this beautiful, quiet, zen-like quality, and I love that it is installed in this smaller conference room, because it really seems to work well in the space. She comes from the abstract expressionist tradition, and she reintroduces it in a new way. There's a lot of sense of dripping, pouring, splattering. I will take the liberty of introducing this one. I feel very protective of this Liam Gillick <laughs> because people bonk into it all the time, lean on it, nick it, cut it, shove carts into it. That's, that's what I want to say, and I want it to stop. <laughs> Liam Gillick comes from the minimalist tradition that is about having the work fabricated from an outside source, but he undermines this practice by purposely using very polished, power-coated cover on it, and it has these very unpredictable colors. This is the artist Uta Barth. 
She's very well known for creating these images that have this lovely blur and this soft, delicate palette to them. A lot of her work has to do with a sense of perception. The image on the left side of the triptych is her shadow as she's looking down, and the two images on the right side are her view when she's looking up from the same spot. So there's a sense of a person, but an absence of a person at the same time, which I kind of enjoy. This is the artist Vic Muniz. He considers himself to be a sculptor, but what he mainly does is photography. In this series, which is based on replicating famous artist works, he is referencing Andy Warhol's very well-known flower series. So when you see it from a distance, you really get that immediacy of saying, oh, is that a Warhol? What is this? And you walk up to it, and you can see when you look up close that there is all flowers and leaves and twigs and grass in the image. So the person who's sitting close to it has a different experience than the person who's sitting across the room. I'm personally really proud to introduce this work by Kelty Ferris. Kelty Ferris was the younger sister of one of my very good friends in middle school, and she was the best friend of my younger brother, and, um, and then she became this amazing artist. And uh, I said to Elizabeth, we should get a Kelty Ferris. And Elizabeth said, you have a Kelty Ferris. <laughs> That's exactly right. I bought it and yeah. I didn't even know your relationship with her. Yeah. I love the blurring here that kind of almost has a digital effect. That it's using traditional materials, but it really looks like it's from the digital age. And I love that about the work.